Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Build Room. In today's episode, we are working on the rear quarter rust in our RA23 Toyota Celica. And I'm going to show you the welding equivalent of, I don't know knots, so I tie lots. Let's check it out. So last week we managed to repair the rust in the strut tower and we managed to fix that pulled metal on the chassis rail. So I'm feeling fairly confident about that repair, but this week is a completely different beast. There are so many complex pieces that need to fit together and metal that needs to be shaped and fabricated. And I really don't have the tools or the skill set to do those like a professional would. But it needs to be done so we can get on with the stone guarding of the underside of the car. So we're just gonna send it and hope for the best. Uh, the main things are it doesn't have to look good, but it does have to be structurally sound and not rust through later. So let's get into it. So looking at the boot in terms of the damage, uh, I think the first thing we're going to have to do is just give it a good clean out. So I'll grab the vacuum and we'll see what we can suck out of this. Okay, so that's cleaned up a little bit more. Um, in order to determine how much I'm going to cut out, what I'm going to do is just try and clean up this back run with a wire brush and then I'll see how it goes with a bit of seam sealer and if and if areas like this bit here clean up okay I'm not going to cut that out but I'm going to make sure whatever goes over there is properly rust converted and protected so that it doesn't rust out in the future. Okay so that's come up um, as expected there's a lot of holes there that just got bigger as I touched them with that grinder. Um, I think the good news is that this area over here uh, still looks like it's got enough meat in it. That'll be fine to just sort of prep on the inside um, and from the outside and protect that. So I think realistically we're only going to be cutting to about here. So this is this damage is pretty obviously from the gaping rust hole above it. So water's just been going into the boot, filling this area and rusting it out. So I'm just going to chisel out all of the seam sealer along here so that we can make sure that we've got viable joints underneath and then we'll um, figure out how much we need to take out in terms of sheet metal. The good thing here is it doesn't actually need to look good, it just needs to be watertight basically. You don't even know me like that. Are you pressed for time? Put you on my Okay, so these areas here aren't amazing. They're not great, but if we were gonna fix these seals 100%, we'd have to pop these panels apart, clean it all out, bend it all back and weld it in. And I think it's probably a bit of overkill for this car. I think my plan is going to be to get as much rust converter in there as I can to neutralize that current rust and then just make sure that it's really sealed up properly so that it doesn't rust again in the future. And obviously not having a leaky boot is gonna take away 95% of the potential for uh, damage in here anyway. So provided we seal up the boot and we do a, a, a medium to good job of this, uh, I think we're gonna be okay. It's mainly just patching up all of these parts that um, is gonna take some time today. I'm fairly confident we're done in here for now. At least I know where I need to cut on the outside of the car. So uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Okay, so looking at the car again from the outside, so realistically we're gonna be cutting back to about here, up through the top, through the wheel arch, and then on the outside, we're gonna come out to about where this, see where this hole is? Just a little bit past that. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut around through there and then across, because we don't really need to cut out this section here. Um, and yeah, so I'll cut across and then I'll cut up and I'll do two, two separate patches. So the first thing I want to do with this area is tape out the cut lines so that I know where I'm cutting and so that I can cut relatively straight. Okay, so I know where my cut lines are going to be. Now I could just jump in and start cutting this out and then get all the way to the back and then start rebuilding it out. But one of the harder things to do will be to shape the panel that needs to go over this area. So what I'm actually gonna try and do is to use this existing garbage metal to shape the piece that I need to replace it. So I'll set this as my target in terms of replacement metal. And then once I've shaped my patch piece, 
I will then actually cut around to suit that patch. So we'll just try that now. Okay, so I've cut out a reasonable size bit of metal. It's probably a little bit bigger than we need, but that's good because then we've got some margins we can trim off later. I'm just gonna get the basic shape of the bottom pinch weld. And then I'll basically be using various items around the workshop, I'd imagine, and the body of the car itself, just to slowly bend this in. Now, this is only about 0.9 millimeter mild steel, and it has a protective coating on it, so it doesn't surface rust. Um, it's very easy to bend. It doesn't take a lot of work to shape this, but once it's welded in place, uh, it'll get that rigidity that it needs. Okay, so that's about right for the uh, pinch weld at the bottom. And now we need this to curve backwards that way. Now, in order to get that curve, there's gonna be two things. Firstly, it's not gonna be the, it's not gonna be the same curve all the way along. So I'm gonna to have to just start um, bending it this way. And then I'll probably have to hammer and dolly it a little bit around here in order to get that last complex curve in. Once again, my caveat here would be that I am not a panel beater. So this isn't gonna be as neat as some people could do. I don't have a shrinker stretcher. I don't have a English wheel. I don't have a bunch of other tools that I might use on something like this. Yeah, I'm literally gonna be re relying on hammer and dolly and a tiny little bit of knowledge around how metal shrinks and stretches when you hit it to try and shape this. It's the first time I've ever tried to shape something this complicated. So we're just gonna see how we go and I'll get it as close as I can. And then the rest I will have to fix with body filler. Uh, hopefully not too thick though. Okay, so like I said, we're keeping this metal here until we're confident that we have a reasonably shaped piece of metal. That's so that we can lay the new metal over the top and see how much it meets that contour. Uh, but also so we can use things like this, which is a contour gauge. So I'm hoping this will have the depth that I need, but basically it's a series of fingers. And when you push it into a shape, like on this line here, Oh, I'm gonna need two hands for this, but I'll just try one more time. Okay, so that's gonna deform. So we go right up there. And now we have the shape that we need that metal to be. So we are looking to get, if I get this in front of the camera right, that kind of bend onto it, okay? So what we can do, we can look at something like this and see how close we get. So that's not gonna be too bad actually. If I, if I was to wrap that steel over this and only wrap it to say, only wrap it over the top two thirds, that's gonna give us close to the curve that we need um, and I just need to do that far enough out. So we'll try that first, we'll try this one. All right, so we have our panel here. Now this doesn't have to be exactly accurate, it's just designed to give us, get us sort of within maybe 80 to 90% of the shape that we need. So if I take this bit and overlap it, try and keep it on the same angle as the rest of the pieces. All right, so if you look down the side there, there's a little bit of gap because of the overlap, but when we cut into this and butt weld it, that will go away, so we're, we're pretty close. Okay, so with a bit of light on it, cut out probably more than I wanted to, but less than I maybe should. The question here is, when do you stop? And I think the answer is here. <laughs> um, there's still some surface rust on the metal surrounding here. Now some of it is just primer. Toyota's have a red primer. So this red in here is just primer there, but these areas here, they're rust. So we're gonna treat them with some rust converter. And then we will copper prime the surfaces that are gonna be closed up like this one here and some of these internal plugs and stuff like that that we're gonna to have to do. And then we're just gonna basically start 
cutting up small pieces and tacking them in. I did cut out this inner guard here, the lip. There's a lip that goes through here. The reason being is there were two layers of metal that I couldn't get apart. Uh, you guarantee inside those pieces of metal, it was rusty as all hell. So I thought better just to cut them off and replace them. And this will be an easy bit to patch uh, than to weld new metal over the top and then have it rust through. So look, I'm pretty confident that once I repair this, the rust will not come back in the near future. Everything's gonna rust out sooner or later. But the bottom line is hopefully once this is prepped, this will last longer than this and it will last longer than this and so on and so forth. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to draw a line in the sand and this is where I'm drawing a line in the sand on this one. Okay, so we've got a pretty reasonable piece here cut out. It should just fit in there quite nicely. There's an air gap here at the moment because we're actually replacing this layer, not this layer. So when we replace this layer, it's gonna lay over the top of this with another lap joint and we'll be welding it through there. I've drilled some holes in the bottom of the plate uh, and that's so that I can plug weld it to this area here. And because I am lapping it here and plug welding and then I'll be cutting and bending around to then fit in a third piece here. Now, I could have tried to make this in one piece. It's just a lot more difficult. And like I said, it doesn't have to be neat here. So I'm more than happy, considering I can get to the back and the world is not compromising the rust proofing, I'm just gonna take a separate piece and put it in there. It's, it's just gonna be a lot easier considering I have to get this curve into it uh, and potentially some of this curve as well. It would have been very hard to get a piece that comes down here at the right uh, curve and then curves that way and also has a lump here. A lot of compound angles there which would have just made it a lot harder than it needs to be in order to get one piece all the way through. Multiple pieces here aren't gonna be a problem long term. Uh, so yeah, just I'm gonna make life easy for myself and save the hard work for the outer skin. Okay, so while that bit's drying, I've just realized I'm not gonna be able to get really into this spot, just down here and around here uh, from inside their boot. So what I'm gonna do is just run a tape line along here and then get some primer and some top coat on these areas so that when I paint from the inside, it'll all just blend into one. And then we'll be ready to weld. Okay, so here's our warts and all look at that world. So at the bottom, the plug worlds were meh, not so great, but they there is penetration there. It's gone all the way through, so I feel confident that that's gonna hold. Um, and then moving up to the top of the panel, you can see up here, it's not particularly neat. Now, basically that, that area did have a bit of rust in it and I had ground it down, so it was quite thin. So I actually had to back off the power a bit because I was just blowing through and I also had those extra cuts here and here that I needed to fill up so that when we grind this all flat, it's just one piece of metal. Um, so yeah, I had to lower the power down and then when I got down to the good metal and I could put the power back up and get back into a groove, um, this is the sort of welding that I would wanna be doing on the rest of them. Um, it's far from a row of nickels, but um, it does have penetration. So if you look on the side, these are relatively flat. There's actually not that much to grind down, uh, meaning that the material that I put in has gone to the backside of the weld. And the thing that made that possible was basically just doing a small tack and then moving on, giving it a brief enough period to cool down slightly, but not completely. I wanted the heat into it so I could get the penetration. So you can see the, I mean, this is the spot weld, so ignore that one. But this is the first point that I touched it at, and it's a little bit higher. That's because there wasn't a lot of heat in the panel already. So this one's high. And then on the next one, you can see, bang, straight into, much lower, a much larger spread of the um, of the world and uh, a lot more solid. And then all I needed to do was retain that amount of heat as I moved along, not moving too quickly, otherwise I would have put too much in and I would have probably burnt through this edge here. So I think that one's pretty successful. Uh, hopefully I can replicate more of those and less of those. Uh, so now that we have this piece in and it's secure, what I can do is trim along the bottom here and line that up. I left an overhang there deliberately. Don't worry about doing that kind of stuff. 
basically it's much easier to just make sure I get this bit right and have some overhangs than it is to get a perfectly placed piece that's just gonna drop in there and be amazing and you're just gonna have to buzz around the side. You know, it makes no difference to just trim those off later. So I will trim along the bottom here and I'll probably trim sort of down that way uh, and then tap this tap this edge over so it matches the, um, the bevel here and then I'll be ready to weld in this piece. So I know that looks janky, um, but the reason I've cut those things in here, we're not gonna lap this over or anything. Uh, we don't want another layer in here, but I bent it around because I had to put this this curve in here to match this. Um, and now I can sort of just keep working this until it's flat and then take the, uh, take the grinder and just cut down here. And then I'll have two clean lines that match each other with basically a uh, less than the width of a grinding disc to weld through. So. Um, that'll be that'll be pretty neat when it's done. Okay, so that's the repair. Like I said, we've got enough structure here to weld on the next piece, which is good. There is a couple of little issues with it. Um, this area here only has one piece of metal. The, this backing plate had basically been eroded away. So there, there is some metal here that I've basically just been blowing through while I've been trying to weld it. What I'm gonna to have to do is put a little bit of metal in just from the back, but I'll do that later once I have the rest of the panels in place. Uh, it's easy to get to and it'll allow me to um, treat all the back of this as well. So now we just have to make up the next layer, which is a piece that extends from basically this corner and, and covers this in a lap joint and all the way across here up here around there and we'll finish inside this seam so it's actually going to finish sort of along there it's still a bit wet uh sort of finish along there so um, we won't have to worry too much about it protruding into this space um, i will probably trim that one before i weld it in place because if i try and cut through that what i'm going to do is cut through this bit as well and then have to stitch it all up and everything like that uh, so this piece will need to fit a little bit better than the other ones that we've done so far but it shouldn't be too much of an issue Trying hard, but you wanna be my friend. In a place to hide, ain't no one to run to. Here we go, here we go again. Come my bluff, I'ma be you till the end. I'm the one you ride, I'm the one you ride to. If you Okay, so on a scale of one to 10, that is about the number 10 bodge. Um, look, this, this metal was really hard to weld into. It just wanted to blow through because it is so thin now that that top layer's rusted off. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna leave that welding as ugly as it is. It doesn't matter, as I said, because it's inside. I've ground down all these areas, so that's good for the next layer to go on. As I said, there is gonna need to be a little bit of further repair here, but I can do that once this internal piece is on. So uh, I'm gonna copper prime all this now. Um, you do have to wire brush these, which I've done. Uh, you can't just sort of paint over raw world. Uh, so look, I'll tidy them up a little bit more and then we'll get some copper primer on here and ready for the next layer. Okay, so uh, I've drilled a couple of holes in here and that is because 
basically I've got to make a piece that comes across here, out here, curls in and then has a nice angle on it uh, to meet up with this guard. Now, that would be difficult enough with the tools that I have if it was just a straight piece. But also it has a, another complex curve here. So it's not gonna be possible for me to make this up in one piece. Better men than me could. Uh, I am gonna be stuck with basically um, cutting a number of pieces, welding them together, and basically like a patchwork quilt, hoping that I have something that is structural, uh, will be ugly, but will be serviceable. So uh, basically I've got this piece here that I've already cut out. And what I'm gonna do is just screw that into this panel with some self tappers for now, temporarily, uh, and shape it to meet the profile of this metal. And then I have another piece of metal that I will then lay over the top of here. And I will, and I'll beat it into shape so that it matches this profile as well. And then I will hopefully trim the two so that they meet up nicely and tack them together. And that will give me that angle. And then I'll have to make two other pieces. One, the first one to curve around here uh, internally. Now, internally, there isn't this slip here. It's basically just rounded over to there and then flat. Now, again, I'm not looking to recreate the OEM. So basically what I'll be doing is bending metal into whatever shape I can get it to to get it out to this corner and then another flat piece in. Um, because again, this has a curve in it, I don't have a shink I don't have a shrinker stretcher, so I will probably have to make it in two pieces. Uh, I have thought about trying something with a hammer and dolly to see if I can basically hammer on one side of the metal to expand it and see if it'll put a curve in it. So we might have a play with that, but I think that would be lucky. Uh, and what'll actually end up happening is I'll probably have to do a couple of bits. So we'll try that now and see how we go. Here we go, here we go again. Time is up and I'm calling up my friends Ain't no wonder why, ain't no wonder why to Here we go, here we go again Call me up and you wanna be my friend I'm the one you ride, I'm the one you ride to If you don't wanna change Ain't no place to hide So looking at it from the inside, we can see we've got the ridge here, which is great. And that basically runs down to nothing, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, there is a valley here for this piece. This will get tidied up. Um, I just trying to grind it with a flap disc. It was, I was just going to end up grinding through this piece of metal. So I'll tidy it up with the die grinder later. Uh, same with this area here, but we have a gap here, which is not the worst thing in the world because, um, I might actually run a beta weld down there when I'm done and then it'll be seam sealed over. So this, this entire seam will have seam sealer all the way through it. Um, and I'll be cleaning out all up here. So I think we're pretty good, um, but we do have another problem. And that problem is the cupboard is bare. We are almost out of shielding gas or we are out of shielding gas. Now I don't want to keep welding without that shielding gas there. That's bad juju. And it's now the middle of the night. So I'm gonna have to catch you guys in the morning. Okay, so another day, another bottle. We have a new bottle of core gas. Now this one is actually different to the last one. So the good news now is if you're gonna get yourself a setup, this cylinder is actually something that you can just buy on a core deposit, hence the name core gas, I guess. So this bottle was 169 bucks uh, plus a $300 deposit. Now that deposit is obviously refundable. So for someone like me, where this gas bottle is gonna last a really long time, uh, spending the 300 on the deposit as opposed to continually paying rent on a bottle is a much more cost-effective way for me to do it. So let's get back into the welding. Look.
Okay, so I've just thrown a coat of copper primer on this. Uh, mainly, I mean, you don't have to copper coat everything. In fact, you probably shouldn't. But this surface here is going to be a lap joint. And then so will this. But while I've got it off the car, there's some other areas, like just inside here, covering all these worlds and things. They may not be things that I can get to, to spray etch primer on um, later. So... You know, a lot of this stuff I will end up cleaning off quickly with a wire brush and then etch priming, but at least for now it's protected. Uh, so let's put it back on the car and see how it fits. Okay, so here's the piece in place now. Um, it, it fits it fits pretty well. I've only got it screwed in place at the moment because I might have to make some adjustments as we put this front plate on. Okay, looking from the inside, you can see that we've got a reasonable alignment here. Uh, the join is not perfect but neat enough for what we're going to do i think that once this area is ground down and made smooth and perhaps we put a a little bit of um uh, seam sealer all through here i think this repair will actually be fairly hard to pick once it's all said and done and we've got a new coating of this i mean this stone guard stuff is pretty forgiving it goes on very thick it has a texture to it it's going to hide a lot of the sins in here and as you can see, even though I don't have any great fabrication skills in terms of forming metal and bits and pieces, I don't have the specialty tools to do it anyway, just by stitching together some steel, you can actually get a reasonable result. I guarantee you there are people out there that could probably form this a lot better than me, uh, and are certainly a lot quicker than me. This has taken, as I said, a lot of time to do. So where we're at now is we're gonna have to start forming this piece to sit on the outside and then filler pieces in here. And then we also need to replicate this bevel down all the way through and tidy up the bottom here so it's nice and watertight and we're not gonna end up getting moisture in here that'll rust it out again. We'll leave it like this for now. And after I've welded everything in, I'm gonna come back in here and prime and uh, paint all through here, leaving only a small amount of copper primer along here and along here for the plug welding that we'll need to do. Other than that, we want to all protect it with some paint that's going to last a really long time. But unfortunately, that's all we're going to get time for in this week's episode. That took a lot longer than I thought. There was a lot of fabrication there uh, and I'm just out of time, unfortunately. I think this episode shows, uh, I mean, you can see there that my welding skills need a lot of work and I am definitely not a fabricator. But I think the old saying is, uh, how do you eat an elephant? Uh, one bite at a time. My recommendation is if you're stuck with a solution like this and you can't afford to or don't want to have someone repair it for you, just keep chipping away at it. And there's a couple of times there when I was trying to work out angles and could I bend sheet metal and fabricate and things just weren't working for me. When I sort of thought, no, stuff it, um, I'm over it, I need a week off or whatever. Um, and I just had to keep plowing through it and that was really the only way that we've got it to where we have today. And I'm pretty sure in next week episode, we're going to get that outside buttoned up without a problem. So once again, thanks very much for watching The Build Room. Uh, smash the subscribe button down below. Tell your mates, uh, help me out. And I will see you next week on The Build Room. Thanks very much. Bye for now.